Hey, muchachos and muchachas, it's good to be back with you. Today I would like to talk to you about airplanes and the forces on them when they're in unaccelerated level flight. Now you wouldn't normally think of airplanes as being an example of statics, but as long as they're not accelerating, that means there's no uh, dynamic forces, no inertial forces, then everything you learned in statics, or most of what you learned in statics, still applies. That balance of forces in particular still applies. The balance of moment still applies. Well, let's look at balance of forces. So the forces in unaccelerated flight. Um, let me draw a picture of an airplane here, and then when I'm done with that, I'll get some actual airplanes, and we'll take a look, okay? So let's do that first. I'm going to need an airplane. Uh, let's see. I'll make a, maybe make some kind of jet here. Okay, need a tail, horizontal tail there. We need an engine coming out the back, and probably some kind of cockpit there. Put a pilot in there, happy little pilot. There's a wing, okay, there's, there's a jet, pretty much. Okay, you get the idea here. There's four forces acting on this plane if it's in unaccelerated flight, level flight, with no, you're not accelerating or decelerating, you're just cruising. It's like when you're in an airline or you're going somewhere, you get up to, to altitude and you sit there and just steam along at the same speed. That's unaccelerated level flight. So first thing you need is thrust, it comes out this end. We'll put, we'll put it there anyway. So thrust. Now thrust comes from a propeller or from a jet engine. Now some propellers are powered by the jet engine. So I guess just to be clear here, there's jet engines, there's turbofans, there's turboprops. Those all have gas turbines in them. And there's piston engines that also drive a propeller. So there's a propeller or a jet exhaust pretty much is making thrust. That's the force that makes you want to go forward. Well, let's see. There's got to be a force making you not want to go forward. What's that called? Well, that's aerodynamic drag. Okay, and that's the force that you have that's, that is a result of you trying to move through the air. Now, all of you have experienced this at some point. If you've been in a car and you stick your hand out the window and you feel that pressure on your hand, that's aerodynamic drag. If you've been riding on a bicycle and you feel that pressure against you from the air as you, as you move through the air, like maybe you're going down a hill or something, that's aerodynamic drag. And uh, all viscous fluids have air, uh, drag, generate drag. So that's what that is. The weight of the plane obviously goes down. And planes vary an awful lot by weight. The smallest uh, aircraft ca capable of carrying a person, these ultralights, they look like these little uh, tube and, and fabric uh, machines powered usually by two-stroke engines. And empty their, let's see, they're uh, 254 pounds in the U.S., so that's like 120 kilograms pretty much. So with a person on board, they're a few hundred kilograms, a few hundred, a uh, couple of hundred pounds. The largest ones are over a million pounds now, so that's like 500,000, 450,000 kilograms. So the range is really pretty broad, but it doesn't matter. Weight is weight. Uh, it doesn't matter what the number is, the, uh, the concept is the same. And the last thing is lift. Okay, well that's, that's what makes the plane want to fly. That's the upward force that counteracts weight. When all of these are in balance, when the thrust equals the drag and the lift equals the weight, you're in unaccelerated flight. Now let's, let's see if we can hang at least an equation on this. The expression for lift is CL one half rho V squared S. So CL is a lift coefficient. It's non-dimensional. It doesn't have any units. It's just a number. And it basically de de describes how much upward force you can get per unit area on a wing. CL is usually around 1. Uh, 1.5 would be awfully high. Um, when you're cruising really fast, you, you, you point the plane into the wind, the angle of the attack, you know, the, the angle with respect to the air is low. So CL is low at cruise. So it's you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, something like that. Um, one half, just a number, rho. That's the density of air. Now, air might weigh more than you think. There's a thing called an ISO standard atmosphere, and that's just the average of the atmospheric measurements around the Earth. And at sea level, at it's 20 or 21 C, you know, shirt sleeve weather basically, so it's 68, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, something like that. Um, the mass of the density of air is 1.23 kilograms per cubic meter. Well, what, does, what weighs 1.23 kilograms? That's kind of a lot, isn't it? Hang on a second. Here's a, here's a bottle of diet root beer that is uh, 500 milliliters, so that's basically the density of water. 
So that's like almost three of these. Almost. Huh. Okay. So maybe with the weight of the bottle, two of those, something like that. But that's a lot. You know, air just, you know, it's just here. It doesn't seem to weigh anything. It does. It has a very significant mass. That's why wind turbines work. Wind turbines take the kinetic energy out of the air and they turn it into electricity. Well, there wouldn't be any kinetic energy if there wasn't any mass. The mass is substantial. So that's that number right there. V is velocity, and lift is a function of velocity squared. So remember, if you double speed, lift goes up by a factor of four. This is the, the, that's squared. Boy, that's, that's a big deal. S is the area. That's the area of the wing. So let's uh, maybe, let's, I'll just leave that there for right now. How do you express drag? Well, drag turns out to be almost the same equation. With one change, there's a drag coefficient, but the rest of it, is the same. I'll get my head out of your way here. So there's a non-dimensional drag coefficient. And this, this is basically an expression of how hard it is to put an op, push an object through the air. So something really long and skinny like an airliner, you know, those nice streamlined airliners, those have a pretty low drag coefficient. Um, the plane designed to go really fast, you know, one of the, like the X-15 or something. Real long and skinny, very smooth, very low drag coefficient. Well, what's something that has a really high drag coefficient? Well, how about a biplane? The biplanes you see maybe at air shows, there's a thing called a Pitts Special. It has two wings and it's got all these struts and wires and stuff hanging out in the breeze. Those make it strong. It's pretty much impossible to break a Pitts Special in the air. And maybe it's happened, but boy, you really got to work at it. It's very strong, but there's a lot of drag that comes from pushing all that stuff through the air. So a Pitts Special would have a much higher drag coefficient than maybe a, a speed record kind of plane or an airliner or something. So this is pretty much it. This is what it looks like. So this is what it looks like on the board. Well, what does it look like in, in something physical? Well, I made, a, I made a little glider here. And so here, this is, this is a little wooden glider I made with my students. So here's the wings, okay? S, S, by the way, is the plan form area. That's when you look down on the top. That's S right there. Okay, now, it's very slender, very long and skinny. I tried to make the drag coefficient really low on this. On this one, notice I've got the, the tips swept back. That helps uh, reduce the, uh, the drag here a little bit, it makes it a little more efficient. Now, there's two kinds of drag here, by the way, that are caught up in that. One of them is called indu induced drag, which is the drag you know, that comes from creating lift, and then the form drag, which is just the shape pushing through the air. So I'm, I'm kind of skipping over some stuff there, but there it is. And then I've got the tail here and everything. Now, for stability, the wing pushes up and the tail pushes down. I'll talk about uh, pitch stability later. But the tail back there actually pushes down on this plane. It doesn't push up. So the weight of the plane has to be uh, uh, added to that downforce from the tail. The, so the wing has to make the weight of the plane plus a little extra to account for the downforce on the tail. And again, that's for pitch stability. So there's a little example in it, and uh, it has to balance. So it balances right there. That's again, that's for stability. Now we'll talk about that later. Well, there's, there's a little example. Let's, you know, go big or go home. Hang on, let's try this. Here's my radio control plane. Okay, this is better. Okay, same idea, the concept is the same. Got the wings on it, they're tapered a little bit, but they're kind of big Hershey bar shaped wings. So this is a trainer, I'm not an especially good pilot yet, so I need a trainer. Actually, this one is pieces of two planes. I bought one, wrecked it, bought another one, wrecked that too. Took all the pieces apart and put them back together. Now fortunately, this, is, this plane is modular, so when you crunch something, you just pull that part off and stick a new one on. Uh, it's called an Aeroscout, by the way, if you're learning to fly, check these things out. If you can't fly this one, you probably can't fly anything. Um, so I've got the area of the wing here. I've got the weight. Now this is, this is fairly heavy. It's probably a kilogram or so. There's a lot of stuff in there. There's a big battery in there, you can see right there. And there's an electric motor back here. And then this foam, which kind of helps it be durable. The landing gear is big and, and forgiving. It weighs a little bit. And there's uh, uh, structural uh, reinforcements in here. It's a big carbon fiber tube that goes down the, the fuselage. And let's see, I think there's a, it has a carbon fiber tube in the wing and you can see the carbon strips there. So it's fairly sophisticated. Now, for as big as it is, it's fairly streamlined. That little tiny propeller flies it pretty well. And the reason you want it streamlined is you want that to be relatively low. Well, 
The fuselage is streamlined, the landing gear isn't, okay? But, you know, I want this thing to be able to slow down. Like I said, I'm a beginning pilot and I need to land slow, so it's good if the plane slows down. Um, but there, there it is written in, in you know, presented in a, in a bigger uh, scale. But next time you see an airplane fly over, or next time you go to the airport or something like that, you can, you can identify this in any plane you see. Thrust, okay, the thrust from this one comes from a little propeller and electric motor. But on an airliner, it's those big engines under the wings. Lift, okay, wing, right? Weight, okay, there's, there has to be enough weight, you know, uh, or enough uh, stuff in here to make the plane fly. So there's batteries and motors on this. On an airliner, there's fuel and engines and people and structures and, and baggage and all kinds of stuff that add to that. And drag, you usually want low drag. So this one's low drag because it's nice and streamlined. An airliner, long skinny tube with a nice streamlined uh, nose and a very smooth everywhere. Everything's fared in. There's not, not a lot of stuff hanging out of it. So there it is. So four forces, the forces have to be in balance. Oh, just crunch that. Fortunately, it's a durable plane. Okay, lift has to equal weight, so some of the forces in the vertical direction is zero. Thrust equals drag. Some of the forces in the horizontal direction equals zero. All right, I hope that helps, and we'll talk to you next time.